Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope you're doing well, staying safe and healthy out there. And I'm Jim, for those of you that are new, great to meet you, thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos every week here on YouTube, showing you how I edit my images using different software products. Today's Luminar 4 again, and I love it. It's my favorite product. I've said that time and time again. And I'm doing a quick tip video. I do a few of those here and there, trying to pick up the frequency of my quick tip videos because Sometimes videos get kind of long. I'm doing 12, 15, 17 minute videos, but sometimes you just kind of want to bam, get in there and just do a little something and have fun. I'm gonna try to, try to do that today, except I start talking about photography and editing and blah, I just keep rambling. Shut up, Jim, let's talk about this. Here's the image. I just got back from Colorado, shot this image, and a couple of things before I get started on how to edit the image, I want to talk about how I shoot the image. I should have recorded this while I was there, but I gotta admit, I was pretty close to this waterfall and it was loud. So here's what I do, I recommend tripod, filter, that could be like an uh, some kind of um, indie filter, right? So I, I have like a one, two, three, four stop, that kind of thing. Sometimes use a 10 stop to really, you know, basically a dark piece of glass to get a really long exposure. And even though I had those with me, I didn't use them in this photo because I was looking for just a little bit of that blurred movement, not the full silky 10 stop kind of thing. Um, so what I did is I shot it with a tight aperture, F22, and this was something like a half a second. You only need like a half a second, sometimes a quarter of a second to get nice, smooth, kind of silky water. Um, and that's what I did here. So even if you don't have a filter, sometimes, you have to tighten the aperture and go like f22 in order to get that half second because it's so bright outside it was bright it was like one in the afternoon and even though we're in a little bit of a sheltered area if i didn't go f22 if i had gone f9 or something it wouldn't have looked like this so tight aperture half a second or with the filter you could do a, a less you know a, a more wide open aperture uh to get the half second anyway that's how I shot this one. That's gonna vary based on your conditions. But I turned it into this. I was looking for, hey, guess what? I'm gonna use the word moody. I, I kinda like moody photos, kinda that romantic lighting, kinda that ethereal, almost fantasy feel. I do that a lot of my images. Again, there's the before, there's the after. Let me hit reset and we'll get into it. Okay, here is my base image. Now, I shot this one kind of tight. There was a, a obviously a wider view of the scene, and I took that in, but for this video uh, and these tips, I'm kind of specifically focused just on the waterfall and a little bit of the rock around it. So, in other words, the tips are gonna vary based on the type of shot that you have. The first thing I wanna do, though, is kinda cool it off. It's a little bit too warm for me, um, and I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna pull the uh, tint a little bit to the right as well, maybe just a tiny bit like that. Then I'm gonna take the exposure down, so it's a little bit too bright in this case. So I think something about like that is gonna help. Smart contrast needs to go up, and one of the great things about contrast is, obviously it creates, it is the difference between the dark and the bright parts. Increasing the contrast is gonna make those dark parts darker, and the bright parts a little bit brighter, so you gotta be a little bit careful with the bright parts because you don't want it to blow out, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but there it is before and after. You can see somewhat how the contrast has uh, impacted the image. Now, I'm gonna take the highlights down a pretty sub a substantial amount, like a negative 50, uh, 52, I think I had. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, 52, and then the whites are gonna come down as well. I'm gonna do about a negative 30, so something about like that. And all I'm trying to do is, because I increase the contrast, the darks are getting darker, the brights are getting brighter. I wanna be careful so the highlights and whites are helping me control that because what I don't want is a big blown out white blob in the middle. I still want some texture and um, some visibility into the, the waterfall itself, right? So I think I've done a good job of that so far. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is get AI structure and I'm gonna drag that to the right a little bit. So I'm gonna do about a 39 or 40 but I don't want that applying to the water. I just want it in the rocks because the rocks have some beautiful texture. So I'm just gonna come over here and say erase. And basically I'm just gonna take these falls, if I can hold my mouse, uh, and just kind of brush over these here. And I'm gonna get a little bit of these here. And I also wanna get some of this water here because I like that to be smooth. But what I don't want is to end up with um, taking the texture out of this lower section of the water. 
I want it to be a little smoother where the water is really in motion, but here where the uh, uh, you know the half second exposure isn't really doing a whole lot for me, I want to keep the texture there. So I'm going to say done, and if I turn that off, I think you can see it does brighten that a little bit back there. But what I'm going to do is bring up some of the texture. Oops, uh, some of the texture in these rocks. I think those look pretty nice, and yet the water still looks nice and smooth, which is kind of keeping it from kind of overcoming what I did with the long exposure in the first place. Okay, next is color, and I'm gonna pop over here to Vibrance and just give it like a 25, 26, something like that. Just giving it a little bit of pop, and now I'm gonna pop over here to Mystical. I love Mystical, and I gotta look at my notes there. Um, I did about a 40 or so here. And as you've seen in previous videos, Mystical is creating a little bit more contrast um, and it creates a little bit of shadow and that sort of thing. And now I'm gonna go get its best friend. I used to, uh, use these a lot in combination and that's Orton. And here I'm going to about a 30 and that's also creating a nice little bit of contrast and pop. So there it is before and after. That one had a bigger effect than Mystical did. But if you look at the before and after of the overall image, there it is before and after. I think we're getting a nice looking little photo here. Now the thing I wanna do here that may not be something you think about doing is I'm gonna go over here to split toning and I'm gonna get into the highlights and I'm gonna do about a 14 on saturation. Uh, but I'm gonna go change the hue and the hue's gonna be like a 200 and 203 something like that so uh, about there and that's basically in the blue so what I'm doing is creating a little bit of that bluish gray and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here saturation for the shadows is gonna be about a 27 it's showing up red because I haven't moved the hue yet and I'm gonna move the hue to about 217 218 something like that and that creates a little bit of that silvery kind of blue look let me show you the before there it is before and after. So that's impacting the water a little bit, and it's also, um, well, the waterfall, I should say, which is primarily white, but also some of the water down below. It's picking up a little bit of that bluer look. There it is before, where it's got a little bit more of the brown, and there it is after, a little bit more of the blue. This is a personal preference, my friends. I like blue in my water, like if I'm doing still water, like lake or whatever, I kinda like it to be kinda blue. I don't like the brownish color. Um, and I'm trying to add a little bit of that here to the waterfall just to give it that kind of look. And now that I've done all those, I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna go to vignette and I wanna just tighten up the, the look here. I'm gonna go negative 50-ish, 54 on the amount and on size, I'm gonna go to about 14 or so. And this is really just tightening up the focus. Clearly the waterfall is the focal point of the image. It's kind of cool this, uh, this big log was just stuck there. So it's kind of like a, um, I don't know, a little bit of a framing element for the side of the, um, of the waterfall. But I also like all the water over here and tightening up the vignette is gonna darken those edges. Let me show you, there's before and after. And I think naturally you're kinda drawn to that brighter part, but I, I wanna do that anyway. Uh, roundness, I'm gonna go to like uh, 42 or so. Uh, and feathering, I'm gonna go pretty high, like 85, 86, something like that. Um, now you may be tempted to pull inner light in a little bit, and you can do that. I would just recommend being very careful because if you pull it very much, it just really is gonna pop those brights. And I don't wanna, number one, I don't wanna blow it out and make it too bright. And number two, I don't wanna lose some of the visibility that I have into the, uh, the bright part there. So I'm gonna do like a five. It's just a minor little thing. So here's the before vignette, and here's after. Now I'm gonna hit the J key and there you're gonna, you see all the blue is the areas that are really dark. They're basically black. What would be in red would be areas that are blown out. So that's a good way, and I recommend doing that with waterfalls, to test and see if your waterfall, that core center area, is blown out. Because honestly, my naked eye, I look at this and I'm thinking, God, that's kind of bright, it's kind of blown out, but it's not. So if I come over here and put highlights back where they were, you get a little bit there. And if I put whites back where they were, you get a little bit more. But um, I, just having a little bit is not a big deal. And I think you can pull that down and uh, control it very nicely. I don't actually care about the blue areas where, where that's totally black. I just mostly care about the highlights and are they blown out. So those are some things that I think about when editing a waterfall. A couple of tips for you. And by the way, if the blue is a little too blue, you can come in and do all sorts of things. You can work on temperature here. You can go into color and you could uh, work on the blue here if you wanted to. Or you could go back to split toning and reduce the amount of saturation. 
uh, or in fact, just not even use split toning if you wanted to. I like how it looks here. The only other thing I have to do is there's a couple of spots here in the middle. I recommend taking spots out, um, especially in a waterfall because you're gonna see them. I see them and they're right in the middle of the frame. So that's a bit of annoyance. I'll take care of that after the video, but that's what my waterfall started like and there's how it ended. And that's just a couple of quick tips for you in terms of how I think about shooting and editing waterfalls. One of my favorite subjects, I absolutely adore shooting and editing running water. So waterfalls, rivers, you know, cascades, things like that. I just adore that. It's one of my favorite subjects. And this is how I approach them. And in this case, what I really wanted to do is darken the shadows some, really accentuate that white streak, if you will, in the center and create a little bit of moodiness around it. Those are for some tips for how I did that using these different tools in Luminar. I hope it helps my friends. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back soon with more Luminar stuff and other things as well. So thanks for watching. I'll see you really soon. Have a great day. Take care and adios.